Hello everyone, welcome to Bineka Online Toastmasters Club meeting. Yay! Give me some clap, reaction. Awesome, awesome. It's good to see you face to face virtually because we are online club. But before we're going to start our meeting, I mean, before I call the club president, let's watch the uh, some instructions, the housekeeping rules by watching this video. Can you see my screen and can you hear? Can you hear it? Yes. Hear. Awesome. Yes, audible. Watch it together. to have fun awesome so let's call upon the club president this thing is toastmaster pipit andriani thank you so much for the introduction hello everyone welcome to bineka is the third sunday oh sorry fourth <laughs> i lost the track of time sorry it's middle of july so people somehow lose the track of time maybe it's just me anyway i'm really happy that uh, a lot of people have decided to come here now because why uh, more than 10 is a lot of people now in the semester. So I'm really happy that we have more than uh, 10 people to um, start this meeting and let's have some fun. And as you know, today the topic is world cuisine. And according to Julia Child, people who love to eat are always the best people. So the first step to be the best, you have to love eating. Okay. And today, I hope I'm looking forward to see a lot of questions brought up by Ben. I hope this time he doesn't consult chat GPT. I want him to use his own mind to ask us questions about world cuisine. Okay. And then, uh, as I see here, we have several guests. I will ask one guest, uh, one of the guests to give some comments in the front side of the meeting, also at the beginning. So the first one here, maybe guest Fauzia. Guest Fauzia, do you want to share uh, how did you find out about the meet, about our meeting today and stuff like that? Guest Fauzia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please introduce okay. yourself. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm so sorry that I can't turn on my camera because I'm in my in the middle of my work shift right now. So I'm in office right now. Uh, uh, thank you, Miss Pipit, for uh, what is it? Ask me first about. I'm sorry, Miss Pipit. How did you find us? How did you know about our meeting? I, uh, I, I just found out uh, about the master uh, this meeting, and. Instagram, I think several days ago. Oh, okay, I'm here. Then, so you're not a member yet, right? You're not a social yep. member yet? Yeah. Uh, yes, okay. So thank you so much, uh, Fauzia. You're a very hardworking person. You're Although you're still <laughs> working, you decided to also join us. And then Seni is our IG um, manager. So thank you so much, Seni, that you found two guests so far, yeah, 
just the first month. Thank you so much. Hopefully, Fauzia, you can enjoy our meeting, and I hope uh, our uh, one of our exco members will reach out to you if you want to keep on joining us. Okay, and okay. we're a very okay. friendly club. We have our A B C motto here. A is appreciate our club members. B is build each other up and C is celebrate our successes. And I hope you resonate with us and decided to uh, keep coming. And maybe if you're interested, you can also join us, right? So I will. I have asked one guest to uh, talk about how she found us. I will ask another guest at the end of the meeting. And then without further ado, I will call the Toastmaster of the meeting to conduct the meeting here. So please welcome Dian PP, who is also our PPE. Hello, hello. Back again to the meeting. <laughs> okay. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster and guests. Uh, today I am as your Toastmaster of the meetings. And our theme today is exploring word pushing. Yeah. As I talked to Natalie just now. Uh, she asked me, what is your favorite food, Fifi? And I said, depend on the regions. Because when it comes to food, every region has its unique uh, specialty or characteristic food. Okay, uh, such as Mpek uh, Mpek from Palembang. I thought, why the name is Mpek Mpek? Yeah, because uh, based on the history of the people who created Pak Pak because at the time so many fish in the Musi River in Palembang and the, the one who uh, the Chinese man created like a fish cake and he sold it around Musi River and the people didn't know the name just say Pak Pak so it's um, Pak Pak yeah so it's a different regions to uh, offer its characteristic. Also, you know that Indonesia has a many kind of durian, right? Yeah, who likes durian in here? <laughs> when you don't like durian. Yeah, so uh, in my opinion, travel related to cuisines, yeah. And then I just came back from Tulongagong and I found the durian name beside uh, Bajol, Petro, and there is Rito. I thought Rito like crypto. What is the related with the crypto and Rito? And because uh, the 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 cushion, the food, also related to the story of the people who make it. So Rito is the man who planned the durians and develop the durian. So now uh, Ripto is the best, the second best durian in Indonesia after Montong. Yeah. So that exploring word questions mean we have to uh, appreciate the richness of its uh, regions. Yeah. Okay. And words of the day is, can I share? Okay. Word of the day is uh, release. Yeah, release. Okay. Yeah. So it is to like or enjoy something. Yeah. I always release a challenge, but uh, from the Americans and you and British is different pronunciations. Let us hear, okay. Let us hear, uh, wait, wait. okay. What is this? Yeah, so is American release and British release. Yeah, and it's mean from the verbs to like or enjoy something as a verb, and as a noun, it's a types of sauce that is eaten with food to add flavor to it yeah then 
uh, also as a noun is enjoyment the enjoyment you get from doing something like she ate her cake slowly and with really so everyone in here including the guest and also us uh, prepare speech please use these words of the day and back to our meeting in toastmaster in a Bineka Toastmaster, we have a three rounds. Uh, change a three rounds. The first is prepare speech. Prepare speech means the member uh, is going to deliver speech based on the project or path they have chosen. And the second is table topic um, table topic sessions, or we can say impromptu sessions. In here, member uh, will like uh, speak, yeah, in their in their speed, and also the guests are welcome to participate in here. And the last is the uh, evaluation sessions. It is a very it is a, an important sessions where the speaker will get a feedback from the affiliator and the team okay before we going to the first station of course uh, the general evaluator will help me to run this meeting and please welcome our general evaluator to explain their role Please welcome our general evaluator, Toastmaster Tipit Andriani. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the meeting, Dian Fifi. I hope you're not bored yet. I'm here again. I'm the general evaluator. So in Toastmasters, of course, we strive to improve ourselves. And how are we going to improve ourselves if no one evaluates us? Because if we evaluate ourselves, it is very biased. I know. I have done it. <laughs> it's impossible to improve. Well, of course, yes, but with the help of other people, it's actually very helpful. So today in our meeting, there is always evaluation team. The first member of our evaluation team is actually our grammarian. And then her name is Mala Manurung, who is also my fellow uh, Toastmasters member from my other club, Phoenix. Thank you so much for volunteering, Mala. Please, oh, Phoenix, sorry, Eagle. Mala, langsung. Yeah. <laughs> Eagle, so please welcome Mala, our grammarian. Thank you, Madam GE. Hi, good evening to all the Toastmasters and guests. I'm Mala. My job is a grammarian. As a grammarian, it's my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note on any improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, saying, or thoughts. As grammarian also, it is, but thanks to the Tom, it's the word of the day has been introduced. So for today's meeting, I'm just telling you one more time, the word of the day is release. So please use this word in your speech as many as you can. And then I'm going to in report my evaluation, my observation, and then the usage of the word of the day. Thank you. Back to you, Madam GE. Yes, I was actually running it down on my evaluation. Our Tom is over-prepared, very prepared. She even uh, did some of the grammarian report. But of course, it's uh, okay if other people help us, right? It lightened our burden. Thank you so much, uh, Mala, our grammarian. Next one is accounter. So accounter is our usual accounter. Always volunteers to be accounter. I really don't know why. So please welcome Maren Radika. Well, thank you, G. Thank you. It's honorable to me that I am as accounter of today's meeting. Well, actually, I was expecting there's some, another member who will take roles as an accounter. However, it is now me today. And I would like to share screens to let you know what is accounter all about. I'm expecting that each of you, please raise your hand if you see what I'm sharing to you. Cool. So in this R counter is made by Alicia Curtis at the beginning of the time. 
it's divided into two segments. First is lexicals and second is non-lexicals. If you found out that somebody mentioned so, yeah, what, now, but, and then until you know, and then all of them considered lexical if their existence actually is not changes the real meaning of a sentence. And then we have non-lexicals. It's more to the unnecessary um or uh, uh, repeated words and along with that word like um, sorry you I uh, or tongue like thing like that. So I will count the use of those. So you better avoid those if you possible or you use slow kind of pace of saying things to avoid lexicals and non-lexicals. I will give the reports to GE. Once GE invited me to give a report. For now, I will give the control back to GE. G. All the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Yes, accounting is very important. It's something that That's I wasn't right. aware of before I joined Toastmasters. Now I'm fully aware of my ah and other people's ah. Sometimes when I listen to radio, I become the ah counter of that person. So it's like a, you know, um, unintended consequence of being a Toastmaster member. But please get used to it. No problem. Uh, nothing to worry about. Now, next one is our timer. Time is very important. We have to keep our time. So please welcome Gio Brata. Is our timer. Well, well thank you, Madam GE. So current, current meeting, uh, I take role as a timer. As usual, we have three sessions for the this meeting the first session is deliver the speech so for the timing for the deliver speech is five uh, is maximum seven minutes uh, and i will give the report when the uh, session is finished and the second session is table topic the, the time uh, for the table topic would uh, is two minutes uh, and the the last is evaluation. For evaluation, the time is three minutes. So I will share the report uh, for each session after finish for each session. So it's uh, that's all for me. And back to Madam G. Just like Rendra, Geo is tied to the timer position, tight role taker. I also don't know why, but. <laughs> Please, Ben, please give a spot for Gio and Rendra in the table topic, please, because they are very loyal role takers of accounting and timing. Thank you so much. Now, the next one is also a very loyal role taker who always takes the ballot counter roles and the Zoom master uh, host. Please welcome DTF Natalie. Yeah, thank you, distinguished Toastmaster. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Pippet Andriani. Actually, I'm not loyal. There is no other choice. <laughs> That's why I'm here as the ballot counter and Zoom host. So my duty for tonight is to help operate tonight's meeting as we are having the virtual meeting. And then as a ballot counter, I will help counting all the votes. And tonight we will only count four table topic speakers because we only have one prepared speech speaker. So I will only um, oh, DTM Pipit, will we vote for the evaluators? Okay, gotcha. So we will only vote for table topic speakers and also evaluators. We have two evaluators and then how many table topic speakers as Toastmaster Ben wants to offer? Back to you, GE. Thank you so much. Now, this is a new role that has been added to our meeting lately, which is table topic evaluation. And I agree, we have to evaluate our table topic so they get the best or the most out of the chance of being the table topic speaker. So please welcome, welcome table topic evaluator, Seni. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, okay, my name is Seni. I am the evaluator for the table topic speakers. So I will try my best to give uh, the feedback to all of the table topics. 
can you just perform your best? Uh, give the answer that uh, you enjoy. And just enjoy the table of session. We're going to explore the cuisine from all over the world. Back to you. Thank you. Thank Back you. To you. Penny, also one of the Vineka people who like to post about food on her social media. So she is the best person to evaluate you for table topic evaluation. And speaking about food, Natalie is so rude. No one else is eating right now. <laughs> but she went in and go ahead eating. No problem. We don't want you to die, Nat. We want you to be full of nutrition. Okay, so please. I would like to welcome back our Toastmaster of the meeting to conduct the prepared speech session. Please welcome back Dean uh, Dian Titi. Dean Dian Titi. Thank you very much, Madam General Ethel Wither and her team. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to the first session. It's a prepared speech session, and we have one speaker. She is a teacher and she is, not, she is from Mauritius. And the first speaker for, for this round will be attempting levels, pathway innovative planning, project understanding your leadership style. And the title is The Leader in Making. The speech length is five until seven minutes and will be evaluated by Dini. Dini, uh, Toastmaster Dini, okay, I yes. request you to please read the, of the speech objective of the first prepared speech. Okay, thank you so much, our Toastmasters of the meeting. Today, Severin will be delivering a speech for understanding your leadership style project. And this speech particularly aims for the member to identify her primary leadership styles. And also for the member to share some aspect of her primary leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. I think from the speech title, we cannot wait to listen to Severin's speech and story about her leadership journey Without further ado, please help me welcome Severin, the leader in making, the leader in making, Severin. Am I audible? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I remember well standing here in this very club speaking about my leadership style in Binikato's Masters Club. Here I am again, one year later, in my second path in innovative planning to talk to you about my leadership style. For those who have heard this speech, please do not worry. This is not a racial free speech. I'm a new person and I am very happy to be sharing with you some insights on how my leadership styles have evolved. Does anyone remember what was my leadership style? Anyone from Vinica? I remember my Toastmaster Marendrika sent me a message to tell me that it was also his leadership style. <laughs> Actually, my leadership style was and is the authoritarian leadership style. But there was two, I will tell you about the second one soon. So the authoritarian leadership style is meant to be leading through by power. So that might look and look scary. It is just that the authoritarian leader has a clear and long-term vision and always work towards this vision. I'm still the authoritarian leader because I believe that my team and people around me are very talented. And I give them the freedom to use their talent to make things happen. And me, as an authoritarian leader, I'm just here to motivate them so that they, I can help them to unleash their potential. But I must confess that I struggle with this still now, because like I said earlier, 
as an authoritarian leader, I believe in my team, but I don't give explicit guidance. If I want my team to be able to go towards our goal, it's important for me as an authoritarian leader to understand that I should be given very detailed guidance so that they can figure out what and how to do things. And that will give them also clarity in, our, in the team's vision. Now my second style was the democratic style. And sincerely, there has been changes in how I see democratic style. The democratic style means that I give the freedom to people to choose on how they want to do things. Of course, democracy is a great thing when it is infused in all our communications because people feel good, people feel welcome. But it happens when, when I am the leader. It is important that even if I want to give people the freedom to choose how they want to do things, it is important for me when I am at the head of the organization to bring everyone to the main goal. And I think it is where the, the limits of democracy comes into play. And a team is a group of different people with different talents. And these talents should come together so that they bring something to the table for a common goal. However, today I have a very different story to tell about leadership. Many experienced professionals would say that the skillful person is not one who knows everything by the books, but someone who has practiced it. Last year, I have to say that I was less experienced than today. And I exposed the two types of leadership and gave you insights on how I could be a better leader. Today, as I embark as the president of my Toastmasters Club in Mauritius, I have learned a few things during the past year through events and people who crossed my life in my leadership journey. First, I think that the most important thing as a leader is not only what you do, but more of what of how you make people feel. I remember last year I had co-workers for whom I gave extreme care and showed great understanding. And I see these people today who respect me because I validated their feelings, I validated their struggles, and I made them felt always welcome and part of the whole family. And I believe that if you're able to care and love for people in your team, there's only good things that will come about it. Secondly, I think that leadership is putting away all your emotions, but at the same time, putting, it, putting in so much emotions. I think it's quite confusing, right? But what I mean by putting away emotions is that there will be people, there will be events that will frustrate you but it shouldn't make your passion and your commitment die. Instead, your emotions should come in to keep the fire burning into yourself for you to always love what you do and love the people around you. I remember from my wedding, the priest said, what won't you do for love? So here, my philosophy today is love your team and the work will be done by itself. Over to you. Okay, thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Toastmaster Severin. Yes, love and care people in love, uh, love and care people in your team, and you will get back. Yeah, so usually uh, the leader only asks them ask for the team, but most, I said, I said most, yeah. <laughs> This is not based on my experience, yeah. They don't care about the people feelings, yeah. Okay, next, uh, for the timer, would you give the report? Did you uh, unmute? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. For the time, Severin is six uh, six minutes to second, so is eligible. Okay. Uh, for the yes, can we take a picture now? Uh, who's there? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A Sunny. Sunny. Everyone, please turn on your cam. Let's take. Yeah. A photo before Suharjo leaves because he leaves usually around <laughs> the middle of the meeting. So, so Yeni, Johan, uh, Fauzia, you want to join us? Let's count to three. Yeah. One, two. Oh, wait, Natalie, you take the best photo usually. All so, right. Yeah. Of course, it's me. The overworked. Yeah, HD. Travel, Fauzia. No, your screen is HD, Nat. No, I know. I'm just joking. All right, everyone. Open your camera. Open your video. Let me count in three, two, one. Smile. One more time. Show me your expression when you eat your favorite food. Your expression when you eat your favorite food. Okay. One, two, three. Thank you. Back to you, Dian Fifi. Okay, thank you very much, Natalie. Your expression when your image and your favorite food. Yeah, okay. Next, let us go to table topic sessions. Okay, let me check. Okay, to provide us with the challenge for the table topic sessions, we have table topic masters that, that who will be conducting of these sessions. Please ask welcome Toastmaster Ben. Toastmaster All ben. right. Thank you very much, Dion PP. Finally, it's been like a month and a half since I've been in a meeting. So great time to come back. I love food. And food is awesome. All right, so let me share my screen a little bit here. One second. All right, so we have, let me hold up, presentation stop. And let's try that again. All right, we got 10 countries. We're gonna go on a little food journey. And just like Pippet said, we're gonna start off with someone who comes in and then leaves. So Joe, pick a country. Toastmasters or Joe. I would like to pick Brazil. Brazil, okay. So Brazil, again, these Brazil. countries represent the best foods in these countries. And I tried to link some kind of life message from each one. And Brazil right. is famous for a dish called feijoada. What's that? What's okay. that? I will explain that as well. I'll type it in the chat. So feijoada, it's like a beef, pork, or chicken stew. Okay. Now, feijoada is a way Brazilians celebrate and have unity. So its role in Brazil, cultural celebrations, teaches us the value of coming together as a community and celebrating our shared experiences. Food does that in Brazil is a very collectivistic uh, people, they're people and they have a lot of parties and celebrations. So your question, how does the role, mm, so the role of Feijoada in Brazil again, brings us together. So how does that teach us as a community to celebrate our shared experiences? In life. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ben. So I'll I would like to bring all of you about 20 years ago when I was first went to America. All right. So it is a new experience for me. It was a little bit of cultural shock when I visited one of the restaurants. So I went in there, the waitress greeted me very, very nicely. And it seems like they treat you very friendly. 
it's different in Indonesia, where sometimes we went to a restaurant. Uh, I own a restaurant, so I know how it feels when a customer walk in and they treat you like, oh, you are my, you are below me, you are my servant. But in America, even though you are a waitress or, you know, they treat you as an equal. And even in America, a garbage man, a garbage man is also treated a very equal. They feel like everybody has their own role. Everybody has contributed, you know, their own uh, fair share in, in a community. That makes me feel like it's a very mind-blowing experience for me when I was quite young. You know, it feels like in life, actually, it doesn't really matter how small or sometimes how, how we think that our job, our occupation, or what we do is really feel like meaningless. But that meaningless is not meaningless to other people. For example, the waitress, imagine that you are sitting down in a restaurant and nobody serves you. You have to take your own food. You have to, you know, prep your own food. Everything's by yourself. It doesn't make sense. So like or, or the garbage man, imagine that nobody picked up your garbage. You have to throw your garbage by yourself, everything. So everything in life, in a community, every, everybody is contributing, no matter how big, how small, no matter how insignificant you think our role is. But in life, no matter how uh, the things that we do, it's always meaning, it's meaningful to other people. So it is not us who can put the meaning but other people see us and what we can, can contribute in the community that's what i think man all right thank you very much again everyone has their own place in in society and no matter what i tell my students do not be a jerk that's it life lesson i don't care about grades i don't care about anything else if you can kind of go through life being successful but don't be a jerk on your way up because those people that you pass on your way up might uh you know, come back in your life somewhere. And fun fact, in New York City, garbage men or sanitation engineers make more money than most teachers. So it's actually a pretty good job uh, if you think about it that way. All right, I was told to pick a couple people. So I'm gonna pick Rendra. Let me share my screen again. Yes, sir. Pick a country. Italian. Okay, yeah. Italy. You guys know where this is going, hopefully. So Italy, pizza is their number one food. Now, they do it right. Okay. Okay. Now, pizza, just like pizza, has evolved and adapted to various culture preferences and ingredients. Life often requires us to adapt and be open to change in order to thrive. Okay. So using pizza in mind, how can the evolution of pizza incorporate diverse flavors and ingredients. Okay, teach us, I'll write this as well. How can pizza teach us to adapt and change? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to use my Italian dialect to say it in English. So basically, if you are visiting every country, the pizza ingredient inside it is so different. It's not the same. If you eat pizza here in Indonesia, you will find a lot of things involved on the pizza. For example, I see there are banana on the pizza. There are chicken on the pizza. There are beef all together in the pizza. Even currently in a pizza hut close to my home, there's limousine pizza. You can choose everything on the pizza as you wish. It has options like paprika, vegetables, and so on. When I was visiting Manila and when I was visiting Singapore and when I was visiting KL, I visited pizza house and I found out they already invented their own pizza themselves. And I do believe we can see every culture already bring the pizza in its own country. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to know how a country developing its evolution on a pizza, just visiting pizza house in its country, you will see the distinguish of its pizza. Exactly the same pizza hut, it could be different in Indonesia, 
Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and I do believe in every part of the world. So by enjoying pizza, ladies and gentlemen, you can taste the country itself. Just pay your time if you are visiting a country, find out a pizza house, which you will find what I'm saying. Every culture is audio written there, picture there on its personal pizza. Find out your pizza and have a nice day. Congratulations, signore. Bravo. Ciao. Okay. Great job. Uh, one little thing, right? Just one little thing. Uh, as a white American male, uh, if I you start using Indonesian accents and sounding like an Indonesian, it probably wouldn't go very well, right? So, Rentra, I like uh, I like the uh, attempt. Well, let's try to be a little bit more understanding of the environment. But it was fun. But again, just. 2023, so let's be aware of like uh, cultural differences. Okay, but good job, nonetheless. All right, let's see, who is another guest? Oh, uh, Loida, are you ready? Did I pronounce that right, Loida? Yes. All right, let me share my screen again. You have one of these countries left. Eight more countries to go. Which country would you like? <laughs> Is it South Korea? South Korea. Okay, South Korea. Great. So South Korea is famous for a lot of good food. Uh, but today we're going to pick one of my favorite foods in South Korea is kimchi. I love kimchi. So in kimchi, it uh, kind of creates this idea of patience and growth. So kimchi's fermentation process teaches us that good things often take time to develop. So patience and perseverance are essential. So here is the question. Wait a minute. I'll type it in the chat. Right, that's not it. One second. Oh no. Question. Copy paste. Okay. Type it in the chat. How can fermentation process of kimchi, requiring patience and time, inspire us to embrace patience and perseverance? for personal growth in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kimchi is very flavorful and delightful food. And with that, have, you have said that fermentation is the main factor wherein it requires time for it to become or reach that flavor. And so that we can relish it. And in regards to our growth and development, we can never be good in just overnight. We have to practice and make ourselves perfect, like, and are not really perfect, but also we have to accept our imperfections, even though we have, we have to try it a lot of times, but with that we have whenever we we want to grow as a person we have to really really do our best and try and make it as we want to be good in our as a person and we have to really give our best if we, we really want to improve ourselves and and we have to be better soon and be, we have to be patient and kind to ourselves if ever. So that's it. Thank you. Awesome. I like the last words, be patient and kind to ourselves. We don't change over time, right? It takes, I mean, we don't change right away. We change over time and adapt. So that's a really good answer. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. Lucy Ho, are you there? Yes, Ben. Would you like a chance, Lucy? I would like to choose Japan. <laughs> Japan. Okay, great. Japan. And have you guys heard uh, Natalie's uh, little talk about uh, Japan earlier? She likes sushi, and that's what I like also. 
So sushi, where is it at? Here we go. So uh, embrace tradition and innovation. Sushi's global popularity has demonstrated the beauty of tradition while being open to new ideas and experiences. So in life, it's essential to respect our roots while being open to innovation. So here is the question. I type it in the chat as well. Uh, go away. Let's see. Right. Uh, all right. What can the global popularity of sushi, combining tradition and innovation, teach us about honoring our roots while embracing new ideas and experiences in life. How many of you love sushi? Show of hands. And how many of you love your roots? Show of hands. And how many of you are open to embrace new ideas and experiences in life? Leslie, wow, so many of you. All right, we all have something in common. Thank you, Ben, for the question. I think as Asians, we are very close to our roots. Yeah, talking as a Malaysian, I am a Chinese. So when I sometimes when I go overseas for traveling, people will say, eh, you are from Malaysia, but you're not a Malay. No, in Malaysia, we do have 30% of Chinese in the world. I mean, in the country. So talking about uh, embracing new ideas and experiences, I think that the past COVID incident was quite a new awakening and to all of us, especially as a teacher myself, I think then you can relate. So when COVID struck, we are to teach at home. And I think that time was very critical for us teachers also in a way that we have to embrace technology like Zoom on how to conduct online classes. I really thank Toastmasters for their ahead of time. We have been using Zoom for quite a while now before uh, Malaysian education started to roll in online teaching using Google platform. Nevertheless, nowadays, as we are slowly returning back to uh, the normal life, I see that there are a lot of clubs slowly returning to physical meeting, which is really good. But uh, in my opinion, I still think that there are clubs like us, you and I, like Pacific, we are online clubs. So I felt that why not we have this kind of hybrid meeting if those in the physical setting, they want to go physical by all means. But if there are one, two, or even three members who can only attend online, I thought that we should embrace this new idea of having a hybrid meeting. Yes, it might be a little bit inconvenient. We cannot be, it cannot be a, like a wonderful thing, a whole full package. But if you talk about like relating it to sushi, why not we just embrace hybrid meetings? Yeah, so that is my question to have, that is my message to have the best of the both worlds. Thank you. All right, yes, good answer. Okay, uh, how many more do we have left? I have like six more countries. Can I do all of them? You can do all of them because you only have one prepared speaker. Yes, awesome. Prapul, are you there? You want a chance at a topic? Yeah, actually, when I saw World Cuisine, I thought uh, there's some food available here. But then 15 minutes uh, into the meeting, I realized it's only discussion about food. So the first oh, thing I pulled over into a coffee shop to whet my appetite and listen to the food. That's awesome. I My wife just brought me some bok so, so I'm going to eat that too after this. All right, so Great. let's pick a pick a country, sir. I think India. I mean, India. Surprise, okay. surprise. Nah, it's okay. India has so much good food and just flavors that will just smack your face, right? And I love Indian food. So one of the foods that's one of the top in the world would be uh, butter chicken. Now, again, there's a lot more great foods there, but we'll use butter chicken. And butter chicken embraces diversity, diverse influences. So butter chicken's disputed origin reflects the cross-culture exchange that enriches our lives. So embracing diverse influence can lead to more open, inclusive perspectives. Okay, so here is the question. Here is the question. I'll type it in the chat as well. All right. How does this disputed origin of butter chicken inspire us to embrace diverse influences that appreciate the cross-culture 
exchange that enriches our life. Legend has it that once uh, an Indian princess called Draupadi, she was, uh, she had this amazing uh, vessel known as the Akshaya Patra. This is a vessel which would give limitless food. And any guest who came into her house never went back hungry. And uh, there was a group of people who wanted to call out her blood. And they knew that by the time the sun set, the Akshaya Patra would stop giving food. So they turned up at her house after sunset and she really didn't have food to offer. And legend has it that Lord Krishna appeared and he told the princess that there must be some food in your kitchen. And he found a grain of rice sticking to one of the undersides of one of the vessels. And he took that grain of rice and he ate it. And he said, oh, I'm now satiated. Now that was a proverbial kind of a satiation. And the guests who turned up, they suddenly did not feel hungry. Well, that this story is more a proverbial kind of uh, uh, story, which says that uh, India has always been a land that could feed any amount of people that came in. This is a country that feeds 1.4 billion, billion people every day. And today, we are speaking of the El Nino effect, where the production of rice could come down. And even countries like Indonesia are looking towards India to import uh, rice. The, the whole uh, Asian economy, all of a sudden, is feeling threatened just because of the El Nino effect. It just goes to show the amount of interdependence there are between countries. Even when you think of Asia, you would think of Asia being abundant in rice, but that's not the case. Coming back to the butter chicken thing, butter chicken is considered blasphemy in India because it has very little to do with India and it has more to do with the British who corrupted the cuisine. There are things far better than the butter chicken, but we use butter chicken as a symbolic gesture that even if the British impose it on us, we accept it. So in that lies the greatness and the diversity of India. Thank you. Wow. History lesson, culture lesson, it's amazing. I love, you know, when you said that, like you said, of course, India, I'll pick. It's like, okay, we're about to hear something that's really connected. And you went to a deep dive with like a fable to actual history. Ah, right. It's great. Thank you. And again, like I did mention that India has a lot of better food than just butter chicken. I've actually never been to an Indian restaurant and eaten butter chicken. Just so Indian cuisine changes every 50 kilometers. Yep. It's big, big, big country. All right. Awesome. That is a great answer. All right. Uh, let's go with Johan. Are you there? Johan. Nope. Going once, twice. Johan. Yes. I said that. That's but you I said, said Johan. <laughs> the H is silent. Johan. See? Got it. All right, sir. How are you? Let's pick okay. a country. We've got Mexico, US, Indonesia, Thailand, and Turkey left. Uh, it's all so hard. I was gonna choose Japan, but it's gone. It's gone. I'll, I'll have I'll I'll have El Mexico. Uh, Mexico. Okay, Mexico. One of my loves tacos. Embrace diversity and inclusion. So there's a myriad of taco fillings and preparations that remind us of the value of diversity. Embracing people from different backgrounds and experiences enrich our lives. So here is the question. A lot of these, you know, food and culture and diversity and bringing together is kind of the theme of this. Here's the question. What can diverse fillings and preparations of tacos teach us about embracing diversity, inclusion in our interactions with others? Thank you so much, Topic Masters, uh, Master, Madam, Miss, Madam President, Fellows Masters. I'm sorry, I'm, I haven't been sleeping well, so bear with, bear mind with me. <laughs> so look at this. I don't know if most of you here know what a. I'm assuming you know what taco is, right? You've seen it, you've tasted it, but there are many kind of tacos for me. But most of us here probably tried the 
Taco Bells because it just opened recently in Indonesia. And maybe you have tried one of those interesting Indonesian restaurants that have Taco Bells, <laughs> kind of interesting flavor. But this is one of those things. If you really want to try, or if you actually try, know what a taco is, it's basically the same flavor as Indonesian food because I've lived in Aceh for a little while and Achenese are very weird. They have to have three flavors in every kind of food. They have to have sweet, salty, and sour. But those are just flavor. Now with taco, there's also texture. You got the crunchiness, you got the softness, and you got that really, really fulfilling flavors. All right, so for me, you know, with all this idea of why do you put so many things in one object? Like most things in life or most things that I, you see in food, you should kind of think it, you know, there's so much diversity. Most of us would think, you know, Indonesia is so great in many, many ways, but every everything will change through times. I'll give you an example. Can I ask in this room? I know we're supposed to be culturally appropriate, but what is the largest country in the world that has the most Muslim in it? Indonesia. My country, bro. Actually, it's just been changed. Now the largest Muslim populated country is actually India. India consists of more than 200 million. You see, my point is this. <laughs> So many things it's possible and so many things that you might want to learn is, might even change. So there is no exact, uh, what do you call it? There is no exact scientific answer because everything will continue to change. And the way for you to relish life is to accept the change. Back to you, Mr. Topic Master. All right. Awesome. And he used the word of the day, people, relish. You can also put relish on hot dogs and relish these questions. All right, I like the first thing he said that Indonesian and Mexican food are very similar because uh, I, I can make an assumption that most of you have not been to Mexico so far away. Uh, but it's like this, if you go outside, pretty much most of our houses, there's like a nasi goreng bakso guy. In, in Mexico, it's a taco like cart and it's like the same price and the flavors just are fantastic. Okay, all right, Alfin, are you there? Did I say it right this time, Pippin? Yes. Okay. What's up, dude? All right. What's up, bro? All right. We got four more countries. America, Indonesia, Thailand, and Turkey. America. America. Okay, I'm not going to finish that. All right. America. So many, so much food in America. Hamburger is what we're going to go with. So embrace balance and moderation. The debate between fast food or gourmet burgers reminds us that striking a balance in life, be it our choices or ambitions, can lead to greater overall satisfaction and fulfillment. So here is your question. Wait a minute, Let's type it in the chat. Okay. How does the debate between fast food and gourmet burgers remind us to strike a balance in life, emphasizing moderation and contentment in our choices and ambitions? Simply, how does a hamburger uh, like allow us to balance our life? Yeah, the thing about hamburger, then I first re remember the first time I made hamburger, it is very delicious. I was born in West Sumatra, in small city. Uh, back in that days, eating hamburger is very expensive things. And we feel very grateful to eat hamburger. You know, everything that is not common is very delicious. And then when I moved to Jakarta to college, 
and already 14 years now in Jakarta, then I know, know that hamburger is not healthy just because it is fast food, it is not healthy stuff. But I still cannot deny that hamburger is very delicious because the combination of meats and the chili I should try, it's very delicious, but not for always eating hamburger is very delicious because sometimes you will get bored. So my opinion, my opinion about hamburger is it is delicious if you eat it, if I eat it once in a while. To eat it always, it may delicious, but it is not healthy for me. I think it is the same for most of the food. If you think one food is delicious, just eat it once, once in a while. For example, I love it rendang, but if I eat it every day, maybe I will get problem with my healthy. And because of that, I eat it once a week. I will feel miss rendang for a while. And then the, once I eat it, I will be more grateful. So fellow Toastmasters and guests, be patient if you like something because admit it, sometimes you need to be separated from it. But believe me, once you meet it, you will be grateful and you will enjoy it more. Thank you. Back to you, Ben. All right, excellent. I eat rendang about three times a week. Ah, my stomach is fat. <laughs> All right. Don't forget you. Thank you. I have three more. We're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nancy, 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 or is it Nancy? Yes. All right. We got three options left. And let me show you. Indonesia, Thailand, or Turkey. We have an extra one if we need it, but wait, that okay. is free. I will choose Thailand. Thailand. Okay. I love Thailand so much. Okay. So question, the food, where does it go? Go, where did it go? All right. Uh, Thailand, 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 Thailand. Pad Thai is my favorite food in Thailand. So embrace resilience and transformation. Pad Thai's historical evolution reflects the resilience and adaptability of cultures. In life, we should embrace change and transform challenges into opportunities. So here is your question. Okay. All these private messages. Okay, here we go. All right. How does the historical evolution of Pad Thai demonstrate resilience and transform inspiring uh, transformation, inspiring us to embrace change and transform challenges into opportunities in our lives? Well, when we talk about food, I would say that I am the one who, who doesn't like to eat too much. So I only, um, that's why my mom always said, Nancy, you are too teeny. You're too teeny. You, you should eat more. But I'd say, I feel full uh, when I got the half of the portion by the time I eat. So once when we're talking about food, I don't really know much about it, but okay. But but I um I believe that food uh really relate with our life. Of course, it relates. We eat food every day, and uh we can also learn from food. For instance, like this food. Um, how we um how we can transform the challenges into the opportunities. I still remember uh, when I was in my junior high school, uh, I was really afraid to, to talk in front of the people and I never uh, participated in any competition. And one day my teacher uh, said to me, Nancy, you have to participate in this competition. I said, yes, only in front of her. She asked me to register myself I register myself, but when the time I didn't join the competition, I missed the opportunity. I made many excuses to her, but then I regret 
with my action because I miss the opportunity. I miss the challenge. And in the following year, I encourage myself to participate in this competition. I just want to say to myself that Nancy, you can talk in front of the people. So I register myself and I take this challenge as an opportunity for me to, um, to step out from my comfort zone. And I think that challenge that bring me into, I think this meeting, I became too interested into uh, to learn more how to communicate with others. And I believe that sometimes the challenge is the big opportunity to make back to you. Awesome, great answer, fantastic. All right, we have two more left. And there's a secret third one if we need it. Uh, let's see if I can read Chinese. Let's see, uh, Lai Ying Chen, is that, is that close? Are you there? Is it Lai Ying Chen? Yeni, Yeni. Okay, no one's answering. All right, Yeni. Oh, she is there, right? Oh, okay. Yeni, let's go with you. We have an extra one if we need it. The question Yeni, is the easy one, please. <laughs> none of them are easy, but here is the fun fact. Once I give you the floor, you can say whatever you want. That is the secret of table talks. Turkey or Indonesia? Indonesia. Finally, my new love and favorite food, rendang. I love it. Matter of fact, I cook my own and do it the traditional way. It takes like six hours. Great. <laughs> okay. So going with that, patience and perseverance. Rendang is a slow cooked dish that requires time and effort and teaches us the value of patience and perseverance in accomplishing our goals and aspirations. So here is your question. How can rendang, a rich and flavorful Indonesian dish, remind us to embrace patience and perseverance in our journey towards achieving our goals in life? Um, actually, um, if Kusha or I like to eat food, usually I always choose Indonesian food, with especially rendang, nasi padang, or satay. But rendang, the most that the, I like it because the rendang has um, the ingredients that uh, only Indonesia have it, even though you will cook. Always uh, abroad, but you don't have that ingredients that the one that we have. Every time when you taste the rendang, when you cook in Indonesia or other country, there is a bad, uh, they don't have uh, the same taste. So uh, this rendang usually, uh, this uh, rendang, right? Um, sometimes when you go to um, some somebody um <laughs> somebody's house mm, no uh, somebody get married usually like that or uh, somebody either fit three like my workers they will always send the one that they have and then sent to my house. And then when I see the rendang, oh my God, I feel so relished <laughs> to have that kind of food. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Finish. All right, it's okay. <laughs> I went to the US last June back home and I went to, in Phoenix, Arizona and Los Angeles, they have really big, giant Asian markets from food all over the world. You're right, Yenny, I could not find four of the ingredients to make proper rendang. And even I had to replace the a certain kind of nut with like peanuts and it was not great. But my family liked it because they don't know the real version. So, oh, uh, can I do two more? Can I do two yes, more? Go ahead, yes. All right, Gio, I'm, you don't get to pick, you get turkey, okay? Um, 
Natalie, please be the timer as the most tasker as usual. Thank you. Sure thing, madam. Mm, okay. So, Gio, you don't get to pick. And our last speaker doesn't get to pick either. Turkey has kebabs. I love kebabs. So embrace collaboration and camaraderie. The communal aspect of kebab consumption teaches us the importance of collaboration and enjoying shared experiences with others. Here is your question. I will type it in the chat. How can the communal aspect of kebab consumption teach us the importance of collaboration and join shared experiences with others in our lives? So simply, Geo, is how can uh, eating together um, make our lives and experiences better? Yep. Okay. Well, actually, kebab is one of my favorite food. So when I eat kebab, sorry, when I look the kebab, the ingredient is... Uh, yeah, there is a lot of in ingredients in kebab. There's meat, onion, cheese, and and etc. So the kebab tell uh, teach us uh, there's a lot of ingredients is collaboration in our mouth. When we hit the kebab, there is a uh, taste. That's collaboration in our mouth. The taste is good. The everything in the ingredients is we can taste one by one, and we can explain uh, the taste. So, in the life, collaboration is need for us to create a new uh, new life or to create new uh, goals. So. Kebab teach us a lot of uh, more thing, a lot of thing can be collaborations to uh, as long as we can we know the we know the the capacity we can put the correct capacity in uh, in collaboration. So kebab, uh, sorry, so uh, collab uh, yeah to to give a uh, to achieve the goal, the collaboration is uh, is need for the uh, many of uh, many of yeah, many of uh, uh, what many of aspect. Okay, thank you. This from me and back to you, Ben. All right, awesome. I love kebabs. Okay, last one. Eleven. Holy smokes. Uh, Yvonne, do you want a try? Sure, I can try. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Yes, so mm, let me find it real quick. Okay, so uh, this is from Greece, and it's kind of like Greece's version of sate, would be like souvlaki, right? And yeah. souvlaki, let me find it. Uh, one second. Mm, all right. So they kind of uh, talk about embracing the simple pleasures in life. So your question is this. Embracing wait, the wait, simple. Wait. No, no. I'll give you the question. It's just a theme of the question. How can souvlaki, a beloved Greek street food, teach us the importance of savoring simple pleasures and finding joy in the little things in life? Yeah. Simple pleasure is help us finding our lives. Yeah, I totally agree yet. Since I find some people surround me, uh, every day and very open, or they talking how to be gain a joy life or a happy life, and they seem to try to pursue in from many different kinds of the methods. And for me, actually, 
how to have a joy and happy life. It's very simple. For example, uh, whenever I walking in the street, actually many times it has make me so joyful. Seems whenever I see people, they look happy and smiling when people are close around them. They just give a very smiling and sweet uh, feedback. I think that is make me joyful. And sometimes when I see the people in the street, I share in some food with them, even they, I don't, we don't know before, but it looks seems they need some food I share with them. And it's always make me joy. So how to make us a, a joyful and a life and happy life? It's very simple. I think all is generated for my intention and for my motivation. I think that is my principle. If I have a good intention and a good motivation, it's very easy in every corner in our life. We can gain a very happiness and a joyful life. So we don't need to spend a lot of effort or even spend a lot of time. How to pursue? a joyful life. I think for example, or oh, sometimes I, I put a lot of efforts in my volunteer job. I think that is also a joyful in my life. Thank you. Back to our table topic, Master Ben. Thank, Thank you, Yvonne. 11 topics and 11 different foods from all over the world. Hopefully you guys are hungry. I am, and that's why I'm gonna eat some bakso here and you guys can enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Back to our, who is it? Is it Dion, right? Yes, yes, Tom. Yes, Dion. Yes. yes, Tom, there you go. Wow, thank you very much, Ben for the conducting double topic sessions, then you can relate to food with all aspect in the world. So I can conclude that talking about food that it's, it's a means that a different region, different place has a different taste and different cultures. Okay, next it's about uh, evaluation sessions. The next part of our meeting is an important of a Toastmaster meeting. In this round, constructive feedback is given to each speaker as well as overall meeting so that members can uh, get benefit from the experience as uh, evaluators and become better speakers. Now, I would like to hand over the sessions to Madam General Evaluators Toastmaster Pipit Andriani. Thank you so much for the time. Now, I would like to conduct this evaluation session. And for those of you who are the guests who do not know, this is where the heart of the meeting is. So basically, the way to improve ourselves is to, by listening to evaluation from other people. So here, Severin, our only prepared speaker, will have the privilege of listening to the evaluation from Dini. So Dini, are you ready to evaluate Severin? Yes, I'm ready. Please take your time. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, I got this quote, but I forget from who. Leadership and learning are dis indispensable to each other. And I believe Severin has gone so much more in, his, in her life that finally she learned to evolve 
her leadership style. From her speech, I'm really into two things. The first one is how she tried to engage with the audience by asking the participants whether you remembered or not. And also try to point out one of the members here if he remembers the leadership style. I think this kind of conversational style with the audience will give more sparks in her speech and then give more engagement to her performance. The second one, I loved the clarity that she brought to the speech. We can, we could really listen to every detail of her story and also her space. It's very, you know, convenient to listen to, right? Uh, she didn't rush and then she didn't slow it down. It's everything is just fine. I love it very much. And I believe as a speaker, Severin can improve even much more by applying these two recommendations from me. The first one is the stage positions. I noticed that Severin stands on this one side uh, throughout the speech. I think it's kind of not, uh, not balanced for a stage performance. That's why I would like to recommend you by adjusting your position or your camera so that you are in the center of the stage. You can move to the right or your left side if you have a different timeline or probably different characters for you to role play with it. And the second one is I noticed that in your opening, you told us that you want to share with us about how your leadership styles have evolved. That's why I would like to suggest to give comparison between your past self versus your current self, how much you evolved. And then what is the difference between the past Severine and then the current Severine in terms of the leadership style? So towards the end of the mid, uh, speech or your closing, you can show this by saying back then, the past Severine was things like this. And now, finally, I get things like this. So you can really show the participants how much you evolved in terms of your leadership styles. All in all, I enjoyed your speech very much. You engage with your audience very well. And then I just love how clear you delivered your speech from the pace and then also from your pronunciation. And also, I hope that you can apply these two recommendations from me to adjust your stage positions in the center of the stage and also show the comparison of your past self versus the current self to uh, demonstrate the evolve of the involvement of your leadership style. With that, back to you, our general evaluator. Thank you so much, Dini, for evaluating Severin. I'm really sure. Uh, Severin got a lot of uh, feedback which she can apply in her next project. Thank you so much. Now, for buying time for Astri because she will have to evaluate Dini which has just finished, I would like to ask us to please open our cam one more time because we increased by two people. So let's take a group photo together and then we will edit Joe's face somewhere in this screen so she, he will not feel, uh, feel left out somehow. So Severin, Juan, Johan, Gayatri, Fauzia, if you can please turn on your cam. But if you cannot, it's also fine. But Natalie, ready to take a shot? One. Yes, madam, your comment Thank is you. <laughs> Okay, everyone, one more time. Uh, let me remove spotlight from Pipit first. Okay. Open your camera, smile in three, two, one. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Now, I hope Astri with a very five seconds limited prepared time. <laughs> um, I hope she's ready to evaluate the evaluation from Dini. So take your time, Astri. 
Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Now I will I will give my report to our evaluator. This is a this is a um important things from Toastmaster that we need we have the evaluation. And I I noticed that Dini already gave a good evaluation because uh first Dini already point out the good things and also things to improve from the speakers. And I think all the all the uh, point from Dini's is um can mm, express all the all the performance of the evaluator. And I think all the point is very um very constructive for the speakers. And the second, um, the good things from the evaluation from Dini also, Dini already give the example for all the recommendation, such as when saying the body position, she moved the position in the center. So uh, the speakers could get the point of the recommendation. And also for the challenge itself, uh, Dini not only give uh, the recommendation of example, also give the challenge. And I think that's a very good. Therefore, if I can suggest uh, two things as well to Dini evaluation, it could be two things. The first is also the body position. Actually, I already noticed uh, for the for, for the first um, time you come to the stage, before you suggest the body position for the speakers, you are here, not really in the center, not, not in the left, but not really in the center. So I think make sure uh, for the next performance, you can um, really pinpoint the center of the stage itself from the first time. And the second, um, I also noticed that you already have all the point and I think for the pace is a bit fast. And I think I can suggest you that maybe if you want to be more calmer or calmer, it will be more even better because I, I noticed that you have a lot of very constructive feedback. If you can give it in a, in a calmer way, I think it will be um, more, more um, people will have it, um, have it more um, interesting or anything. No, no, they can receive it um, openly more, something like that. Uh, therefore, I, I believe Toastmaster Dini already uh, passed this project because uh, Toastmaster Dini have given the evaluation and the good things from, from the D Dini as Dini already give the recommendation also pinpoint all the all the evaluation aspect such as pointing the good things and also things to improve and also Dini can improve in a, in in make sharing the body position and try to give the speech calmer thank you so much back to you GE thank you so much for the evaluation I I really think both of you are pretty calm at least compared to me <laughs> so so yeah both of you are so chill but thank you so much for the evaluation and i really hope everyone can also benefit from this feedback yes now the next in the agenda is actually continuing with the evaluation team so i'd like to call the first oh before we go that we go to that let's call the timer to make sure we know who is eligible to be voted or not Gio? Oh, Astri 237 and, okay, Dini, that means Dini is qualified, yeah, both of them are qualified. Okay, yep. so. Yes, correct, qualified, both of them qualified. Thank you so much. Is Natalie ready with the poll? Your thing, I launched the poll, so please vote. For co-hosts, please send your votes PM, private message to me. Thank okay. you. Thank you, you Natalie, help. always staying ready. Now, while voting at the same time, we also have the ability to listen at the same time, right? So I would like to call uh, Rendra. Do you want to start with your uh, counting report? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Madam G. And I would like to share my screen. Let's go get it shared. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you ever seen, well, now I make a little bit adjustments to how I present my report. First of all, in a term of lexical, 
we have known that Natalie have made three. Oh my God, it's postponed. Okay, then those must repeat overall 10. Yan Fifi for the lexicals four. Actually, all of the report, you can see it by yourself. And I would like to just underline things that I would like to emphasize. Most of us in this meeting tends to use so a lot of time. It is 34 in terms of lexicals. And in number two is and and then it nine times made by all the speakers has a chance to speak. And then for the non-lexicals, as usual, I always be the first. So maybe this is why it is called a counter. No one dare to challenge the ah. It is the first since the beginning of the day. And then second is um 12 times. Now for the persons I would like to elaborate that Jill already made 15 by now for all the non-lexical. So the com combine of those both lexical and lexical is 25 times. And the second as three, well, it surprised me because as three used to have really less in both part, lexical and lexical. However, today she made a record by herself uh, for the non-lexical is 13 times. So all combination is 16 times. Friends, it is not into the shame that we make this kind of a lot of art uh, um, are in both lexical and lexical. It is just we have to reduce. Why? It sounds not, not that good. <laughs> Second of all, it's it seems that we are nervous. But however, this is Toastmasters. Everyone learning, everyone made improvement, and this is a really friendly environment. So we will see yourself growing. If it's not now, it must be next two weeks or next two months. But here, I would like to give the control back to G. G, I would like to screenshot this and post it to the group so everyone will see by themselves, as per now, how they have made in lexical and lexical. Now, I give the control back to G. G, time is yours. Stop share. Always impressed by Rendra's detailed accounting report, right, people? And he listened carefully, although he doesn't look very serious sometimes. I don't know, but he listens carefully. <laughs> All right. And then also, yes, everyone, we are like kimchi. We are keep on fermenting ourselves, right? Including in accounting, uh, in, including in reducing our ah. Uh, I always have more than 10 because I usually improvise and come up with uh many times. Thank you for the report, Rendra. Now let's go to our grammarian. Mala, please share your grammarian report. Thank you, Madam GE. It's I really enjoy listening, but then sometimes I forgot to take note to do my job. Especially as a grammarian, I need to be very attentive. So I'm sorry for that. So I'm just going to share. Um, so I think I need to remind again and again that, that we can use it actually. Okay. Um, let me make it something more. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. So this one. And she's gone. Sorry. I'm back. <laughs> Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So speaker who used the word of the day are Toastmaster Dian, Toastmaster Johan, and Toastmaster Yedi. Thank you for using this in your speech. Give a good example also for us to use it. And um, for the 
Like I said, this improper grammatical use. Uh, someone says before it's mean. Don't forget that this one is supposed to be it means. Yeah, because it's singular, it's supposed to be with the verb with the S. And then also to achieve the goal, the collaboration is needed. We need to make it as a passive form. So it's supposed to be is needed. And I think the rest we are good. And this one is the I pay attention more also to the good quotes, thoughts, words are saying. So the speaker said unleash their potential. I think this is always a very meaningful for us, for me especially, fulfilling flavors. Or we can also say flavorful and release the world. And also the quotes that has been said by Toastmaster Dini, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. And also I learned that we can use also the word evolve for leadership. So this one, I think uh, the things that we hopefully can be used in our speech and thank you to all speakers who say this. Back to you, Madam G. Thank you so much, Mala. Very concise. We were worried a little bit. We thought you were gone. And then <laughs> we don't know who will report on the grammar, <laughs> right? Thank you so much for coming back and also give us a very uh, succinct uh, grammarian report. Now, like I said earlier, we have a new role in Bineka, but it's not new in other club, but it's really new in our, in, club, in our club. So we have table topic evaluation. Please welcome Seni, who will deliver it. Hello okay. everyone. Okay, uh, I have noticed that we have the total of eleven table topic speaker today. Yeah, and all of you have answered the one. Yes, brand specific question from our topic master Ben. <laughs> good job, good job. Okay, uh. Let me share a little bit of my uh, feedback from my observation of uh, from all of you for a couple of speakers who have Joe, then uh, Marindra, then Prafal, also Professor Johan, Professor Alfin, Professor Yeni, and Gio. Uh, I I noticed that uh, you guys have the proper proper online setup, like a screen, it's proper. We can see uh, your half body, upper half body from the head until uh, the chest. Yeah, and you guys also use uh, clear language. And we all of us uh, understand what you are saying. And you also uh, try your best to share your personal story. Uh, some of you share a fact from your country, and you guys uh, deliver a positive message. Uh, some of you deliver a positive message, and some of you closing with a uh, encouraging message to your audience. Um, for the guests, like Loida, congratulations. Uh, I really like the way you uh, deliver your speech because uh, even I noticed you are, you are nervous, but you're not looking that nervous actually, and you so you you deliver uh, your speech uh, in smile. You you are smiling when you deliver your speech, and we as the audience we we could enjoy. It. Yeah, and your personal story also related uh, with the question. You closing also. Oh, sorry. Uh, that that's how I mentioned. Uh, that was uh, Nancy. Nancy, yeah. You deliver your speech uh, with smile. Wow. Okay. And for guest Loida, guest Loida. Okay. Uh, I noticed that you deliver a message uh, in your speeches, but uh, I can't find that you deliver your personal story. Maybe you can try to add on your personal story in the beginning before you connect, before you uh, jump into the message. So you try to connect your personal story and then. Connect the personal story to the message. 
but overall it's good because you deliver the speech in time. And for Lucy Hall, hello Lucy Hall. Uh, I like uh, the way that you deliver, uh, you tell the story that related, 100% related to Postmasters, but it's just a little bit over time. Just a little bit, one second. It's fine. Let's try it another time. And for Postmaster Yvonne, we are your postmaster, right? So Yvonne, uh, we would love to see your face actually, because you deliver uh, a great, uh, a great speech for us. Yeah, we really love that uh, all of the speakers, even though you are a couple of speakers, that you only deliver uh, two to thirty uh, minutes, uh, two minutes to thirty seconds. But we really love, we really encourage you to on the video so we can feel you we can connect when you deliver this speech okay uh and also you need to try to work on uh to speak in time because i noticed that you were over time a little bit eight seconds but it's fine okay overall i really i really i really the the topic session today good job to our uh, 11 uh, several topic speakers and also the topic master and i hope my evaluation benefits all of you keep on practicing looking forward to see you deliver another speeches at clinica good job everyone uh, that's all from me and i give the control back to madam if it can be any Thank you so much, Denny. Yes, I think this is the first time for me to see you uh, evaluating table topic, yeah? Now we will keep on probably putting you in the permanent position. <laughs> so let's see, yeah? Right, thank you so much. Now I would like to go to the general evaluation. Uh, I will not take much of your time. So let me share a screen. Okay, so the meetings, we started on time. Amazing, we love it. And I think we will finish uh, earlier than the agenda, which is yay. And then role takers were completed in time. Poster was interesting, thank you so much. And also posted on social media on in a timely manner. And we managed to get even people from outside Toastmasters to come here. So it was amazing. Room for improvement, only one prepared speaker, unfortunately, right? But also there's a good side of it, allowed extended time for the table topic session. So more people get a chance to speak. Toastmaster of the meeting came, pre came prepared with the theme, even explained the meaning of the word of the day, which is usually done by the grammarian. But it's okay, we love excited table uh, Toastmaster of the meeting, okay? And also, she was able to explain the three, the three sessions, knowing that there are uh, guests here. So probably they didn't know what to expect. Table topic master, the info was interesting, informative. The questions were very deep and philosophical. I love them. Prepared, prepared enough questions for an extended time. Uh, but some of the questions were long, but luckily posted on the chat box. Ideally, you should be able to say the question twice effortlessly. Yeah. And sometimes I see we have different level of English proficiency sometimes. So it might be challenging for some speakers if there are some big words in it, right? So I think um, it's also safe to prepare two versions of the questions with the simpler vocabulary, something like that, right? But I like the way you also re-explain the meaning of the questions when there are some big words there. Evaluation, Dini, great commendations. Now, this is just my opinion. I think we have to give applicable feedback as many or, if possible, more than the commendation because that's, I think, what uh, the speaker is looking for in the evaluation, right? Of course, we are uh, happy to be praised for our performance, but uh, the recommendation or the feedback, I think it should be more or at least equal in number. Evaluation, Astri, very critical evaluation. Yeah, I almost shocked. I'm a debater, so I know what I can. So yes, very critical, also good point. And I uh, personally did not understand by please be calmer as an evaluation. Uh, I did not get the context enough. Did you mean like it was in nervousness or it was in a pace? 
So I think you needed to make it more clear what you mean as the evaluator needs to be calmer so the message would be clearer. Because in my impression, uh, Dini was pretty calm and she was a lot calmer than myself, for example. So yes, uh, this one for me it was a little bit question mark. A counter, very complete presentation as always, nothing new here for Indra, but I would like to just analyze, uh, highlight here that I like it when you decided to explain the highlights instead of the individual count. Believe me, your accounting report is just like our Wi-Fi or you know, selfie with a large group. Everyone will look at their own number. So you don't have to read their number for them. The first thing I look for is all oh, me 11. I don't care how many I brand Ben makes, for example, right? So yes, you don't need to highlight every individual's count, just the overall reports of the ah counting. Grammarian acknowledge the speakers who use the word of the day, not only the uh, wrong grammar, but also the good one. Okay, also the good use. Okay, and sometimes please invite the attendants to guess the mistakes or maybe say the words that are challenging and then so they can get involved in your grammarian report. Table topic evaluation, in detail evaluation, love it, balance between commendation and feedback. Unfortunately, your audio was unclear, but it wasn't your fault. We didn't even mention that. We just put it in the chat box. So uh, please make sure you have uh, you know, clearer audio next time. But overall, it was a really good job. It was my first time seeing you as the topic evaluation as well. So thank you so much, Sunny, and everyone else in the role-taking team. Now let's move forward to the next session, which is the ballot counter will announce the most favorite of the day. Please welcome Natalie. Yes, thank you, Madam GE. All right, guys, this is one of the sessions that you are all looking for because you want to see your name on the certificate. I'm pretty sure of it. You don't have to lie. We are all, we all do. So let me start with the obvious one, the, be, uh, the best or the favorite prepared speech speaker. And since we only have one speaker, Toastmaster Severin, see do. So Sunny, if you can help pin Severin with the I certificate. I will probably pin her. And Sunny, can you please help screen shoot? I can do that. Oh, you can. Okay. Send, send, uh, Severin, can you turn on your cam so we can pin you? Severin, Severin. Okay, I will just pin Mala and then <laughs> replace her face with Severin. <laughs> so please uh, take photos, Sunny. Thank you. Hey, Severin. <laughs> Three, two, one. Thank you, Mala. <laughs> Thank you. Next, Thank Natalie. You. Next is the best or the favorite evaluator between Dini and Astri tonight. Mm -hmm. Vote is very tight. Only two votes difference. Congrats, Dini. Dini. Let's spin Dini. Dini is two. not here. So, Mala, oh. back on I will <laughs> return. Let's go to... Now, like, I'll just... For the sake of equality, I will spotlight Yeni. All right. Okay. Ready, Yeni? Three, two, one. Okay. Thank you. All right. And last but not least, the favorite or best table topic speaker among the nine eligible speakers is Toastmaster Praful Fenugopal. Okay, ah, Praful. Praful is here, right? Okay, let me pin pin him to the wall. Okay, hey, Praful. Wow, three, two, one. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Madam G. Thank you. I always I always look forward to uh, listen to Praful's uh, speech. Right? Always there are always random stuff you can find. It's like a walking Wikipedia or something, right? Although I don't know why or how I will use that information in the future, but <laughs> nice to know. Yeah. But, right. but I take sadistic uh, pleasure in just going against the popular opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a, uh, yeah. Why would we go with the pack, right? 
go our own way. Right. All right. So um, I think that is it. So before uh, anything I miss, guys, let me check the guess, guess, in here. guess, comment. The guess I have not see, I guess it's two, yes. one. Right. Guess, guess comment. Yes. So let's go with the guest comment. Uh, remove my spotlight, please. So I can see the guest. All right. So Raful, we have Raful, Juan, Johan, Loida, Nancy. But I will choose those who have not spoken, probably. So let's see Juan. Juan, do you want to share? Uh, how did you find us? And yada yada. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was late uh, coming to this meeting. So actually, I uh, didn't see the table topic and prepare speech session in this meeting. So yeah, I, this is actually uh, my second time uh, joining Bineka Toastmaster Club meeting. And I found Bineka uh, through Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they saw my comment. Yuan, are you interested to uh, send? We can send you invitation through WhatsApp. Invitation uh, through email, it's okay. Email is okay. Okay, so is Rendra here? Rendra, Rendra. Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Please share your email address to Juan or Juan can share email address to Rendra so you guys oh, yes. can uh, give each other's contact. Thank you so much. So just in case Juan forget to open Instagram during, you know, close to our meeting so he can get it conveniently, the information about our next meeting. Thank you so much, Juan. Yeah, thank you. Right, so next one. Is, is it okay if it's just one person? Because everyone had a chance to speak today. Is there anyone here has not had a chance to speak? Everyone has, right? Okay, great. So that is it, people. Thank you so much for coming. Actually, Bineka Online, we're usually meeting first and third Sunday every month. And only, last mo only this month is special. But next month, it will be back to normal. So ne the next meeting will be on 6th. Hey, wait, guys, is it 6th, right? 6th, 6th of August. So I hope uh, you mark it on your calendar. If you probably miss our invitation somewhere, so I hope you mark it in your calendar and we always um, open at 6 p.m. Jakarta time or uh, GMT plus 7, right? So thank you so much for coming and then see you next time, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. See you.